So, you you're not going to take accountability that like you hurt my feelings? Why would I do that? Okay. <laughs> okay. You're watching Sophie Diary. Hey y'all, I'm back. I haven't posted a YouTube video in such a long time. So welcome to my first episode of Sophie Diaries where we get close and personal and where y'all hear my thoughts and opinions just like a diary. <laughs> and today's topic is about why some of y'all don't have friends. That sound crazy, right? <laughs> but let's be real here. Friendships aren't the same anymore. Like I know y'all had a moment where you look around and think like, dang, none of my friends are real or I don't have any supportive friends. And we're gonna be getting into that. So I have a couple points, like one, how y'all approach friendships, two, the lack of accountability, three, how people choose friends for the wrong reason. And I have many other points I'm gonna dive into in this video, but let's get started. <laughs> so one is no accountability. I put that one because I realized a lot of y'all friendships don't last because some of y'all don't know how to take accountability. <laughs> like some of y'all really cannot look at other people's perspectives and you're so blind it's okay to admit that you're wrong and that's really important and some of y'all don't realize how important that is <laughs> like a lot of y'all don't know how to take responsibility for your actions and refuse to see other people's perspectives and that's the one of the reason why some of y'all lost a lot of your friends it's like you have to know to take accountability like you have to sit there and be like oh my god i was wrong i'm so sorry or I just try to see other people's perspectives. We're not kids anymore. At some point, you gotta take accountability, y'all. Like, I feel like for a friendship to last a long period of time, you have to understand when to be like, okay, I was wrong. Even me, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was so hard-headed in friendships and where like, I wanna take accountability and I realized like, girl, this hurt someone. Like, this really did hurt someone. Like, if someone tell you like, hey, what you did bother me? Oh, hold on, y'all, my friend is calling me. Hello? Um, so you know how you texted me uh, about that joke that you said you didn't like? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm just having trouble, you know, understanding, you know, what, what the issue is. Because, like, it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't... What? I'm, I'm just a little confused about why you, you sent me that. Um, I didn't like the joke. It hurt my feelings. Like... And that's the one reason I texted you because I didn't feel comfortable about that joke. Yeah, but like, I, it was it was a joke. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to hurt you. It was just a joke. You can't take a joke. It was, what's going on? But did I, do you not hear I just said it hurt my feelings? So even if it was a joke, I'm telling you, it bothered me. And no, 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 okay. But like, even though you said it hurt your feelings, I just said it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, so what are we, you know? So, you you're not going to take accountability that like you hurt my feelings? Why would I do that? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Y yeah. Y'all saw that? You, this is what I mean. Accountability is so important and they're not taking accountability. That's really weird. No, they shouldn't have done that. They should have just apologized. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Some of y'all need to get therapy, please. Cause it's like, you have to take accountability and you have to see both sides. Seeing different perspectives are so important. Especially being an adult, you have to understand why something bothers other people. Even if it's like, you don't feel that way. Like, I feel like there's sometimes I understand where like, oh, I want to be mad about this. Why would, would, why would this person be mad about this? You have to understand everyone's different. Everyone's react to things differently. Certain things trigger other people. And, you have to like take that moment and understand people's perspective. That's really that's all important. Like everyone react to things differently, to be honest. Overall, accountability is key. If you can't own up, your friendship will crumble. Period. Like you have to be able to admit when you're wrong or just be able to say I'm sorry. Overall, you have to really like try your best to understand your friends and try to put yourself in your in their shoes because sometimes the things you do to someone else even if it doesn't bother you it will bother them but yeah that's one two low maintenance friends <laughs> i could write a whole essay about this hey y'all so this is future sophie and i just want to say there's different types of low maintenance friendships and there are generally people that use the word low maintenance friend as an excuse of being a bad friend and that's what i'm talking about because there's so many people that will generally like 
ghost their friend or don't talk to their friend or anything like that and then pop back in their life when they're ready which is not fair period okay that's it maintenance friendships overall is weird to me I feel like it's just an excuse to being a bad friend. Like literally y'all, when you search up low maintenance friendship, it literally tells you a way to keep or maintain your friendship, which a lot of people don't know how to do. I feel like when it comes down to low maintenance friendship, I feel like people use that word and take it to the stream and where like, they actually just like, for real, like, okay, I don't need to put any effort in that friendship. No, babe, just cause it's low maintenance, you still have to make a little effort in that friendship, which a lot of y'all struggle with. And I'm going to stand 10 toe down on my low maintenance opinion because I know a lot of y'all who does low maintenance things are going to be mad, but I don't care. What do you mean you can go months without talking to your friend? Are you not concerned for them? Like, do they not pop up in your head like, hey, I wonder how blah, blah, blah feeling or I wonder what's going on with them. Like talking to your friend only when it's convenient to you is very terrible and very shitty to be honest. And that friend has every right to ghost you to not talk to you ever again because it's unfair to them like that's really unfair because like i generally do feel like anything could happen to that friend anything and you not talk to that friend for a long period of time it's kind of weird because like then you reach out to them like hey doing and they're like oh terrible oh what happened girl i want to talk to you about it because you weren't here when i when i needed you and also i feel like growing up seeing the way my parents friends were they weren't no low maintenance friends. My mom friends were always at her house. My mom friend always called her like, hey, I'm coming over, this not third. Like, I feel like low maintenance friendship just became a thing. <laughs> and I feel like also, one of the reasons why some of y'all believe you're a low maintenance friend is because of trauma. And that's something you have to work through. Something happened to you where you're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to talk to my friends that much or I'm better off alone. But like, being alone is not healthy. And to go further on this, I mean, like, honestly, we're in a world of billions of people. I feel like you cannot isolate yourself and just shut yourself down on friendship and saying you're going to be alone. I feel like what if the days you want to get married or the days you want to celebrate things or, or your wins, you want to celebrate that all alone? You want your wedding to be empty? Like, come on now. Like, I think sometimes appreciating the people around you and being around people is also important also loving your alone time is also important that's the other thing like that's two separate things you can still love being alone and also love being around your friends you know what i mean you have to make a healthy balance because a friendship is like a relationship in some aspects like you're not gonna ghost your partner for a hot minute you know what i mean you're not gonna do that Ow. so it's like why would you do that to your friends future me is back in i know you're gonna be like boo girl come on but like honestly i know some people are gonna take this like as a weird way like oh my god what do you mean like friendship is like a relationship it kind of is to be honest if you really think about it the only thing you're not doing with your um friends is like the intimate parts of your partner but it's like when you get with your partner did y'all not start as friends like you know a lot of y'all who got in a relationship started as friends of course like a friendship is generally just like a relationship a little bit, just a little bit. There's a couple aspects that's so different. You gotta like, you know, the same way you're gonna be there for your nigga, you can still be there for your friends a little bit too, you know what I mean? It's like, obviously you don't have to give them a hundred that you give to your partner, but you can at least give them 50. Mm, I'm eating right now. Okay, back to, back to the video, bro, bro, my bad. Also, I just wanna say like how, just like sometime low maintenance of friendship could be a one-side communication and it can make a friendship feel shallow and just transactional. Like, girl, are you only reaching out to me when you need advice? Are you only reaching out to me when you're feeling okay? Like, what, what do you want from me? Because it's like, I don't feel like this is a friendship. I just feel like you only want me when you good in the hood. Part of friendship is like, there's gonna be times when you're down, right? And you have to tell your friend that. I feel like not everything is going to be perfect. You shouldn't only be there for your friend when they're happy or you shouldn't expect your friends to only be there for you when you're happy. I think like that's the other thing and I think that's also one of the causes of low is friendship. Not wanting to go through the trials and tribulations point. That's part of the growth to be honest. Wait, hold on y'all. Someone's knocking at my door. Huh? It's been six months. What you mean? How am I doing? Like, are you not a little maintenance friend? Like, you don't let me in? Like, girl, no. Oh. <sighs> that was weird. And this is what I mean. Low maintenance friendship is weird to me. Low maintenance 
nah, that's not a friendship. If you're really my friend, you will make time for me and be able to communicate with me if something's going on. Next point is lack of growth. I feel like part of friendship, um, growing as a person is essential in that friendship, to be honest. Because I feel like when one person is stuck, the friendship could really fade, to be honest. Like, if you are staying in the same middle school era while your friend is growing to be as adult and living life and doing the things she needs to do, and meanwhile, you're just in that same mindset, of course you're going to be left behind, which sounds shitty, but it's like, it happens. You have to grow, and I feel like for a relationship and a bond to be good, growth is very important. If you're not maturing and growing, it's very easy to get left behind, which sounds shitty, but it freaking happens. Cause I know like at one point with me, I was in the same stuck negative mindset and where like, I know my friend was trying their best to help me, but there's only so much I can do. And something I realized is like, I can't understand if it comes to a point if they do leave me because it's like, what else can they do for me if I just won't get up and like start moving and like grow into the person I need to grow to? And this is where I say like, if you are struggling to like, you know, be the person you want to be, get therapy, my sister. <laughs> get therapy or just start doing hobbies, start doing something you're interested in because like growth is so important and to grow, I feel like you are becoming the person you need to be. And it's like, if you're staying in the same mindset that you used to have, that's not healthy. And if you're staying behind because you're scared, that's also not healthy. You have to grow. Grow is essential. Like I said, when one person is stuck, the friendship could fade. And expanding the possibility of growth of a friendship becomes more deeper with growth, to be honest. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, okay, for example, one of my friends, I've been friends with them for years. The older I get, the mature I, res the mature I am. And... I feel like the more our friendship grow because we learn who we are, the more things we're interested in and we learn our habits and just everything else about each other and we're like our bond just increase and just becomes more healthier too at that. And I feel like that's the other thing. Like I feel like part of growth is like like learning healthy boundaries and learning more of ourselves. And if you're not grown, baby, then it's like you're gonna be left behind, which sounds so shady and sad. I'm not gonna sometimes you just grow apart, which sucks. It's disappointing. It's grow apart. Like y'all may be growing, but y'all grow apart. And maybe later on in the future, y'all become close again. But I do know there's some moments, it's generally none of y'all fault. It's just like y'all grow apart and y'all both doing your own thing. I feel like a lot of people become friends for a superficial reason. For example, y'all relate to not liking someone. Kind of weird. I become friends because of jealousy. I become friends because, oh my God, like this person is famous. Or become friends with someone because of aesthetics. Hey. I know uh, some of y'all can relate to that. I'm not trying to call y'all out, but that's one of the reasons y'all friendship don't last because y'all not becoming friends with people for the right reasons. Like, come on. You cannot become friends with someone because they're pretty. We have to start building friendships out of actually having the same interests as other people. Like, oh my God, she likes pottery. I like pottery. Oh my God, we both relate to like, I don't know, dance. We like dingling dance and stuff like that. Like. I generally do think friendships often fall apart because they're not built on anything real. There's no substance. Like, you're being friends with someone because they're aesthetics. You're being friends with someone because you're jealous of them. Like, that's, you don't think that's weird? Like, what? If you're friends with someone because they look good in the photo or your friend. The other thing is like, or you become friends with someone because they're fun to go in a club with. That's weird. I think we need to start building more substance in our friendship and also like making sure the friends we have are people we actually can like relate to and actually enjoy their presence and actually want to do more with and also want to grow with each other like i don't know like i just think like i wouldn't want to be friends with someone because they they pretty i think like that's weird and not everyone's meant to be your friend that's the other thing like just because you see someone like oh my god this, this person should be my friend group oh my god they're so lit we got to do this not there no it's okay, it's okay, babe. You don't have to have a huge group as your friend. You have to also understand like, with friendship, it's meant to be built and meant to be healthy. Why are you building friendship on something unstable? Ooh, I ate with that, hold on, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but yeah, friends are for wrong reasons. This point I'm about to say is so important. And some of y'all struggle with that. I don't, but some of y'all struggle with that. 
communication communication is so important eh, babe okay like some of y'all forget friendships aren't perfect y'all gonna argue y'all gonna be mad at each other y'all gonna feel some type of way about some situation but you know it can be solved by communicating about how you feel like you have to address the red flags guys like you can't just ignore it and be like oh my god like no nah, like i don't want to cause no problems of friendship no babe the problem is going to start if you don't communicate and, and vocalize how you feel about something. And that's also being intentional with your friendships too because friendships do take work. It takes understanding and is heavy on the both the comfortable and the uncomfortable conversation. I feel like a lot of friendships I had would have lasted if like, you know, if I communicated how I felt or if they communicated how they felt. Like I literally had a friend who I literally think about her all the time but I just knew we couldn't be friends no more because it came to a point since I didn't want to communicate how I felt, I started building like a really bad emotion towards his friend. Like, and I hated that. I literally did not like them anymore. And like when I, when they did tell time where like, okay, I blew up and I started addressing everything I felt. They're like, Sophie, if you felt this way, why do you tell me this? Like, why you waited this long? Like, that's the only thing. If you wait so long, to vocalize how you feel or you hold everything you feel inside you're literally going to blow up on that friend and they're probably confused like girl you never said this to me before so why are you just now telling me this like like if you really care about this person you have to be willing to have these tough conversations even if you're scared like you gotta do things scared to be honest <laughs> and i regret some of these friendships where like i didn't communicate how i feel and i blew up on them i wish i like you know i wish i communicate how I felt I wish I was able to rewind time but at least now I can acknowledge that okay if I ever had any even if it's small that's the other thing even if it's small it's important to vocalize that do not be like uh it's not that important uh it's whatever no you have to vocalize how you feel because that not important feeling you have is going to intensify to something bigger next time period and like I said arguments happen but the key is being willing to talk things out and see other people's perspective. And I mentioned this earlier, seeing other people's perspective is so important. Something you never thought will hurt one of your friends, you're gonna realize it did hurt them. Communication helps you learn your friend's boundaries, help you learn more about your friend and just understand them better. And that's why I like, you know, I feel like communication is so important. You have to talk to your friend. If you feel like any weird shift or like happened to your friend, do not let it sit and marinate. You gotta communicate. Hey, is something going on? Are we beefing? Like, what's the what's the tea? But also, you have to learn how to communicate well. Like, you don't scream at your friend. You don't yell at your friend. You have to like have a moment where you allow room for you and your friend to conversate. But yeah, like I said, communication is very important. It can make or break a friendship. Because if you don't communicate, you'll crash out. Like, you will literally explode on that friend. And also, the other thing is, like, if you are going to communicate, you have to leave room for your friend to be able to talk. Y'all have to be able to not crash out and scream at your friend if they tell you something that's going to make you feel a little sad or hurt. I think there's going to be a couple times where your friend's going to tell you something like, hey, you said something I didn't like, and it's going to hurt your feelings, and that's okay. But you also have to be like, Okay, I understand what I did wrong. I apologize. You know what I mean? Like, like that's really important. And that's also part of growth. Like, accepting the thing they tell you and like, you know, taking into consideration, even if it hurts your feelings, taking into consideration and trying to understand why they said that to you and what, and what made them feel that way. Putting yourself in their shoes. But it's like, if you don't want to communicate and stuff like that, just end that friendship, bro. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, there's a couple times where I'm like, okay, honestly, I don't even want to communicate about this to this person because they keep doing it. That's the other thing. If, like, you communicate to this friend multiple times how you feel and you, you, you feel like they're not listening to you, it's a point to end that friendship, which sucks, but it's a point to end it. Because I'm not going to argue with you over and over about what you did to me. Okay, but overall, sometimes we make it hard for ourselves to form or maintain a friendship by shutting people out. Usually out of fear. <laughs> and I get it, girl. I be scared too. Like, I have a lot of trauma with the friendships. Like, fear of getting hurt. Fear of betrayal. Or fear of repeating past mistakes. Like, bro, I kid you not, y'all. I get so anxious when it comes down to making new friendships because I'm like, I don't want to repeat the same mistakes I did before. But we got to be real. But if you're too scared of letting people in, 
you're missing out on opportunities and building something real. I just want to say not all red flag should be the end of the friendship. Like readjusting is also really important too. Which is hard to hear because it's like, damn, now nah, like she costs a boundary. That's my red flag. But it's like, I do think, like I said, part of growth is so important to towards friendship. Like if you tell someone they did something they didn't, you didn't like, I generally do feel like sometimes the friendship will grow where they will never do that again. This person will become your best friend. Like readjusting is so important, but readjustment to each other works best when both parties are open to it. In which, you know, people struggle with that. Like, people hate change, but change is also important. Like, if you have a quality that is, like, a red flag that's, like, kind of weird, like, lack of communication, and your friend is telling you that, I think you have to open a room up and say, okay, if I do want to keep this friendship up, let me work on this problem. You know what I mean? But if that's a boundary you do not want to work on, then okay, end the friendship. Look for people that can work towards you. But yeah, if you don't align, you don't align. But overall... Stop letting past failures block your blessings. Friendships take effort. They take communication. And yeah, sometimes they fail. But that doesn't mean you should close yourself off from new connections. People change. You have changed too. Now, when it comes out of community, let's be real, y'all. It's not about having 20 friends you barely know. It's about having quality people around you. Please listen to me, y'all. Quality people around you, not quantity. You deserve friends who show up for you, who celebrate your wins, who plans your birthday parties, and who are there for you when you need someone to cry. Like, I feel like when it comes down to friendship, there's gonna be ups and downs, and the friends should be there for you during that. A friend should be there for you when you're down. A friend should be there for you when you win. A friend should be there for you when you're sad. That's part of a friendship, y'all. That's part of community. I feel like people forget what community is. It's so important, y'all. But like like I said, at the end of the day, don't settle for less. Don't keep people in your life who don't treat you the way you deserve. Mm -hmm. I hope you heard that for real. It's not about how long you've been friends with someone. It's more about the quality of the friendship too. It doesn't matter how long y'all been friends. It really doesn't matter. Something that really made me realize how important friendship is, is like, like just imagine this, you're in the hospital and you have no real friends beside you. Like, damn. Like, I was writing this down. I'm like, damn, I don't want to be struggling and i'm all alone i don't want to be surrounded with love and like support i don't want to be surrounded around people that like, are jealous of me i don't want to be surrounded with people that only want to be my friend because they want something from me i don't want to be surrounded around people that only want to use me no i deserve better period and i feel like a lot of you guys deserve better too but like i said not everyone's meant to be your friend and that's okay what matter is having a solid community. And if you're struggling with friendship, take a step back and ask yourself, are these people really meant for me? Or am I just keeping them around because it's convenient? That's really important. Like, I know for me, I was keeping a lot of people around me because it's convenient. I just didn't want to be alone. But there's some moments where I realized, for me, I have to find the right people. There's gonna be a, moment, a brief moment I'm gonna be alone. But as long as you love your own presence, that wouldn't matter. But it's like, it's going to be a brief moment, I'm going to be alone, but I'm going to find my right people. I'm going to find the people who are there for me. And that's really important to me. But overall, that's pretty much it. These are all my points of why some of y'all don't have friends. I hope this kind of helps y'all to rebuild your friendship and just like, you know, find your people, to be honest. Like, And I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this my first episode, Sophie Diaries. <laughs> I struggle a little bit. Now... The dire entry of the day is what is your biggest lesson you have learned about friendship recently? It could be good or bad. Like, be transparent in the comments. I don't know. I know for me, y'all, something I learned recently is like people be people be shitty. Like it happens and it's all about how you're you can handle that to be honest. Like, I don't know for me, girl, I was gonna crash out. <laughs> I was literally gonna crash out. But I realized, like, you know, things happen for a reason. But yeah, I hope you like this video. Bye.